Let's try, there we go. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Welcome as we gather for worship today, and we especially want to welcome those visiting with us, our guests this morning. As we worship together today, and we meditate upon his word, and we receive his sacraments, may we be strengthened in our faith and glorify our Savior and Lord. I don't know if we started early today or not. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Yeah, 930, okay. Uh, someone mentioned to me, um, we talked about Christmas last week, but today would be the day, wouldn't it? Today is July 25th, so uh, Merry Christmas <laughs> in July. So let's begin our time of worship. You'll know we don't begin with uh, an opening hymn, per se, right uh, before the confession. But I invite you now to please rise as we join together in the confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Let us pause for a moment of silent reflection for self-examination. O oh, almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gradual psalm singing is from 74. I'll sing the Alleluia once through and then join you in singing it as well. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Let's try it together. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. That God is my King from long ago. He brings salvation on the earth. Alleluia, Alleluia. split open the sea by your power. You broke the heads of the monster in the waters. <coughs> it was you who opened up springs and streams. You dried up the ever-flowing rivers. Alleluia. Alleluia. And yours also the night. You establish the sun and moon. 
It was you who set all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Alleluia. 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 Have regard for your covenant because habitations of violence fill the dark places of the land. Do not let the oppressed retreat in disgrace. May the poor and needy praise your name. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May we tell of your wonderful deeds. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of creation who deigns to bless your children in sacraments of grace using simple elements to enliven our memorial of your word, renew us and grant us new life. May your spirit fill us that we may walk in your ways to the glory of your son's holy name, who works and loves with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Hopefully you noticed something a little different in the church this morning. All these beautiful banners that have been uh, given to uh, God's people in this place to enhance our worship time and experience. And so we want to dedicate them to that purpose this morning. The banners that are hanging in the uh, church and the sanctuary today 
are given to the glory of God in memory of Larry D. Hanchett by his wife, Annette. Where'd she go? She's, oh, there she is. Any closer? <laughs> okay. Um, and the children, uh, Reverend Mark D. and Paul D. and uh, Marlene, along with their spouses, and one of the grandchildren that are here this morning as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, Moses was commanded by the Lord to receive gifts from the people for the beautification of the sanctuary. Everyone whose heart stirred and whose spirit was moved brought a contribution to the Lord to be used in the Lord's house in all of its services. Since the Lord has taught us in his holy word that everything is sanctified by the word of God and prayer, <clears throat> it is fitting that we bless and sanctify these beautiful Christian banners for use in God's holy house. And we pray. O oh God, you have directed us to bring offerings for your glory. We implore you to bless these Christian banners. Grant that they may reflect our love for you. Be a blessing and benefit your church and bring joy to those who are inspired by them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you can see the messages on the banners are uh, titles of hymns or uh, words from Holy Scripture. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Let your light shine before people so they can see the good things you do. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 in the Sermon on the Mount. How about uh, the banner here? Beautiful purple. Uh, I don't know what kind of tree that is, but it's really pretty. Uh, just a closer walk with thee. Um, turn your eyes upon Jesus. We have uh, where the word is proclaimed near the pulpit. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 105, Psalm 105. I forget the verse. Bill, help me out. 119.105, that's it, yeah, all righty. And then, of course, uh, one that's probably near and dear to us, great is thy faithfulness, the faithfulness of God, but his faithfulness to Faith Lutheran Church in Elma. And so the Lord God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless these vivid, visual, encouraging banners in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with a, the service of the reading of God's Holy Word. The Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, 
and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Raise your praise and magnify the Lord in his majesty. lesson is from Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 through 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and they cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. This 
is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We join together confessing our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing the hymn of the day. Here comes Jesus in the Red Book 133. Jesus, see him walking on the water. Oh, here comes Jesus. He's the master of the waves that roll. Here comes Jesus. Let him take your hand. Here comes Jesus. See him feed the hungry people. He'll fill your life till you hunger no more. Oh, here comes Jesus. He's the answer to your every need. Here comes Jesus. He will your life restore. Here comes Jesus. Jesus, he's the great physician. Here comes Jesus, don't be afraid. Here comes Jesus, walking on the wall.
The grace of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ be with us. The love of his heavenly Father and ours, and the encouragement and the insight of the Holy Spirit into God's word for us this day. So bless us. Amen. The word of God for us this day is that of the gospel lesson from Mark chapter 6, as we read it just a few moments ago. What makes you afraid? What do you fear? Some people fear heights. They don't like to be very up high. Um, I experienced that when we went to the Grand Canyon, and there's no railings. Uh, if you've been there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it wasn't so much for me, but my grandson, uh, who already ran into one of the trees, and uh, we were going to have to take him to the hospital to get stitches because he had a pretty good-sized gash. But he got so close to the edge, and I didn't think he appreciated how high up we really were and how dangerous that was. I felt great fear when I saw that. But many people uh, have fears of that or falling, perhaps a, a fear of water. Some people just don't like to uh, be in the water. They never learn to swim, and there's a great fear. And I suppose if you can't swim, <laughs> you ought to have some fear about that. How about children? What do they fear? Darkness. And so we remedy that with a, uh, a nightlight, actually, <laughs> I don't know that it's, uh, I'm not afraid of the dark, but we have a lot of night lights around the house. I have more of a fear of falling down the stairs in the dark uh, than I do about the darkness. Violence, storms, oh, many, many things. How about, uh, are you afraid of, um, oh, these kinds of evil sorts of paranormal forces that there's so many movies about these days, about zombies and uh, uh, vampires and uh, evil spirits. I won't watch them. I, I admit, they scare me. I, I would rather watch a chick flick than to watch those. <laughs> um, they just really scare me because I truly believe there are powerful evil forces uh, that, that war against us, and I just can't take much entertainment. Well, many things to fear. In our gospel lesson, we have many of these uh, things that are present, and the disciples are very fearful and afraid. Some years ago, there was a movie out. Uh, I think the title was The Perfect Storm. It was based on a true story of some fishermen who were based in Gloucester, and they would go way out into the ocean to fish for these great big huge fish. But it had uh, been a string of bad luck for this one crew, and so they took some chances and went out when the weather wasn't probably the best, and they were taking a risk at going out, and sure enough, they go out for one more catch if they can, you know, uh, make their year a little bit better, um, and they bring in a lot of fish. But the perfect storm was converging on them. Three different weather fronts were all heading right towards them, and they found themselves out in the middle of the, the ocean, uh, many miles off of shore, in this storm. And I remember seeing that fishing boat try to make it up the, the uh, waves that were 50 feet high. And uh, sadly, they did not make it. But at one point in the movie, they find themselves, they've been trying to, to fight against the wind and the waves and the stormy weather. All of a sudden, it became sunny and calm. And you wonder, wow, how could that be? It looked like, what, did the storm already pass? Well, they found themselves in the eye, the E-Y-E, eye of the storm. And uh, it varies as to how big that can be. And the water was calm. It was almost like, oh, okay, they, they, uh, they're going to be saved. They're going to get out of this, but they don't. Because they're in the eye of the storm, and as they, they have to, they can't stay in that eye 
uh, forever. They, as they, they move out and they move into what's called the eyelid of the storm, that's the most powerful wind and waves of the whole storm fronts. And that's when they capsize. And I remember as the movie closes, my greatest, one of my greatest fears, I saw it right there up on the screen. There was one sailor left. He was all alone, one fisherman. Everybody else had already gone down and drowned. He was out there in the middle of the ocean, in the dark, in the cold water, all by himself. Now, they had reached out for help. They had sent out May days, but uh, they were too far out and the weather was too bad for that to, uh, message to get through. They tried to save the boat, but that didn't work. And then they tried to save things they could survive on or float on for a while, but the storm was just too strong. So what's left? He's out there all alone. It just kind of gave me shivers to, to see that. Well, he wasn't all alone, and there was one source of help that he could turn to, and that, of course, is based on his faith in the Lord. Now, I'd like to say that's what happened in the movie. It wasn't. Uh, he heard the voice of his fiance as he struggled to stay alive a few minutes longer. The disciples are out in the middle of the sea. It's dark. They're in a storm. These, some of these are very experienced seamen and fishermen. They know how to handle this. And yet, they were struggling against all these forces. And they were also afraid. And where can they turn for help? Well, Jesus was not with them. I'd like to go back through the gospel lesson briefly and take a look at how our Lord Jesus Christ uses this as a wonderful teaching moment and something we can really learn from. He's not with them. Why? Because what had just happened, we talked about last week, the feeding of the 5,000 men and the many other, maybe 10 or more thousand women and children with five loaves and two fish. Now, we hear later in the gospel lesson the disciples, they, they didn't get it. They didn't understand about the loaves and the fish. Their hearts were hardened. They just couldn't quite understand it all. And so the people rally around Jesus, and Jesus knows they're, they're threatening to make him a political leader, an earthly kind of king, and why not? He could give everybody uh, food to eat. He could give everybody um, all kinds of, of uh, assistance and heal people and so forth. He'd be the excellent king. But it wasn't why he came. He didn't come to be that kind of king. Knowing this danger, he does two things. He dismisses his disciples. He gets them away very quickly because they didn't understand. They could have been susceptible to this temptation <clears throat> and said, oh, well, this is good. We'll be part of the inner uh, leadership uh, of this new kingdom, and uh, how great will that be? Uh, so he gets them out in a boat to go on with their mission to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. He dismisses the crowd, and he gets away from them too. And, and surely this must have been a great temptation to him. I'm, I'm sure Satan used the opportunity to really work on him. He goes up on the mountain to pray as oftentimes he does. What a wonderful example we have there. <clears throat> Going off to pray on his own and be strengthened in that uh, relationship with the Father and that communication with the Lord. We too can learn much about that. As the Lord may steer us through difficult times and he helps us to avoid temptation, but we might also follow his example and, and go to the Lord in prayer. How many times have you heard it said? You've, you've tried this, you've tried that, you've done this, you've called these people to help or this group or what. You can't seem to solve your problem. This doctor doesn't know what, uh, what's wrong and this specialist isn't sure. And you say, what's left? What, what else can we possibly do? We've tried everything. Well, oh, I suppose we could pray. 
Wouldn't that be great if we just went to prayer right away? Right away. Even before we consult all of those uh, people who do have gifts and talents and abilities and perhaps can help. Jesus gives us that example. So he's up on the land praying. The disciples are out in the boat. Now he sees them from where he is and in the dark and in a storm out in the sea, there's no way as, as just Jesus as the uh, human being, a man, could see them, but yet he does. He sees that they're having great trouble. He, he knows what's going on with them. It crossed my mind, uh, and you can't really say for sure, he knew it ahead of time and put them in that situation. Sometimes we have to go through storms in life to grow in our faith. I, I have a brother, my youngest brother in Florida. He went through a really bad storm in his life not so long ago, and he turned to me to help him out of it. Um, he lost his job. They were uh, not able to keep up with their bills and uh, their rent and so forth, and he was being threatened to be evicted. And he came and asked for quite a large sum to be able to bail him out. And, and I, I said, I, I can't do it. I, I, and I didn't think I should. I'd already helped him many times and thought, boy, he's, it, this isn't helping him, really. And so they had to go through this eviction, and we certainly helped them anyways with finding a new place. I talked to him just a couple days ago on the phone. He said, you know what? That was the best thing that could have happened to us. They're, they found another home that they're renting, and it's a far better situation. It's less expensive. So I think sometimes we go through storms. Um, my brother's not, um, oh, he's not a church member. He's not very religious. But we did pray on the phone together, which I'm sure for him was quite a stretch. Um, but uh, I, I pray maybe somehow he'll see that, that he, if he trusted in the Lord, uh, he would uh, be with him. And Jesus sees the disciples. He knows. Have you ever wondered, does Jesus see what you're going through? Does he understand the storms in your life? And uh, why is this all happening to me? Well, be assured, he does. He does see us in all circumstances, and especially those storms in life. And what does he do? He comes to them. He comes to their, them in their time of need and helps them out. But he comes to them in a rather unique kind of way that only God could do. He walks on the water. Now, we always focus on that part of it, the miraculous part, walking on the water, then the wind calming down, and so forth. But it's not so much about that miracle. But why did Jesus do that? In fact, I even wondered, uh, uh, at one point in the text, uh, when he's walking towards them on the water, um, we find it here, uh, he meant to pass by them. I wondered, what does that mean? And you think, what? He was walking on the water out there, and he meant to kind of skirt around them so they wouldn't see him? No, it was just the opposite. He meant to walk on the water so they could see him do this and know that indeed, just like the, the miracle of multiplying the fish and loaves, he is the Son of God. And uh, it would strengthen them in their understanding and, of course, their faith in him. Well, their first response is what? If you were out in a boat in a storm in the middle of a dark night about 4 o'clock in the morning and you saw someone walking towards you on the water, what would you think? Oh, it's a ghost. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure uh, that's what they were wondering. My goodness, uh, if things aren't bad enough, now there's uh, an evil spirit coming towards us, a ghost? Well, Jesus right away says something very significant, and you might not pick it up very easily. He says, take heart. Don't be afraid. It is I. Now, the phrase in the Greek, ego eimi, is reminiscent of God using kind of that 
as his name. Remember when Moses goes to Pharaoh? And uh, Moses says, hey, when I get there and tell Pharaoh to let all the slaves go, who shall I say it is that sends me? And he, he says, I am. It is I. It was reminiscent. Jesus is God. He defies the laws of nature walking on water. He controls the wind and he declares, it is I. Hence, that's where I was going with all of this. He is the I, not the E-Y-E, but he's the I, the I am. He's the guy we turn to in the storm. He's that place of peace and hope. He's the one that we can find and take refuge in. And he knows us, he knows our situation, and he comes to us, he's willing to. He gets in the boat, the wind dies down, and uh, they're utterly astounded because they still don't get it. And actually, it, it would take quite a while before they really did understand just who this Jesus really was and what his mission was all about. He continues now on his mission to Bethsaida, and he heals many people there that are suffering in other kinds of storms, of pain, of uh, illnesses, of, of possessions uh, by demons, and so forth. He heals them and comes to them as well. God is that I, that great I am, in the storms of our lives as well. And we can turn to him. He wants us to turn to him. In World War II, in a place called Cologne in Italy, some soldiers found themselves in a very terrible situation. They had no ammunition left. They were being pursued by the enemy soldiers. So they took refuge in an underground bunker that had been partially blown away. And it was dark. They were underground. They had to maintain silence so they could not be heard. And while they were in this bunker, they discovered there was some kind of engraving or inscription on the wall of the bunker. When it was safe, they were able to read what it said. And it said this, I believe in the sun, even if it is not shining. It's dark where they are. I believe in God, even if he is silent. I believe in God's love, <clears throat> even if it is hidden. Well, you and I today could change those inscriptions because we know by the power of the Spirit through faith who God is and what he means to us and his love for us. We could certainly embellish those inscriptions. Those were wonderful statements of faith, but we could change them to say this, I believe in the light. For Christ is the light in the darkness, in our darkness. I believe in God, for he spoke in Christ and is never silent. I believe in God's love, for he showed me there's no greater love than this, that he gave his son to die for me. May that great I, the I am, and his peace and his hope so bless us and may that peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise now as we join in response with the offertory. Free 
Spirit. Amen. You may be seated now as we receive the offering. Darlene will be singing three verses of My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. The refrain's already printed in your bulletin. So as we uh, give of our gifts to the Lord, we uh, think of how God is truly our refuge. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. No merit of my own I claim, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock, rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. rise as we join our hearts and our minds in the prayer of the church. Dear Lord, itinerant preacher, drawn to people of small towns in need, we know we also need your touch, your calm, your message. Our fellow citizens need you to surprise them with the good news of the gospel. May you draw many to your house of worship as we live for you and pray for one another and for those who are searching for you in Western New York. Lord of the whole earth, oceans, and their currents, winds and storm systems, we pray for those caught in flooding or in drought, farmers who are vulnerable to soil and weather, homeless sleeping in the elements, and the hungry who seek relief in many places of suffering. Lord of the Church, we take heart as you promise that the forces of hell will not destroy the church, but we grieve over those who twist the words of Scripture to defend wrong teaching and cover up grave sins. We join in your tears over those who would mislead your children with half-truths and confusion. We unite with your people throughout the earth in praise to your glory. We pray you to bless those who proclaim truth without compromise. Bless the testimony of your people and leaders of pure intentions everywhere. We pray for President Harrison of our Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, for President Wisher of our Eastern District, 
the leadership of our Concordia universities and seminaries, bless them in a renewal and a harvest nationwide to glorify your name. Dear God, lover of justice, compassionate helper of disciples, and manager of history, we lift your people who suffer persecution around the world. Believers in Cuba and China, North Korea and Nigeria, Christians in Indonesia and Vietnam, some share in the fellowship of your apostles and preachers with John the Baptist, Stephen, Barnabas, Peter, and Paul. Jesus Christ, through the sacrament of the altar and the unity of the Spirit, we are one with your suffering people everywhere, and we pray for your love to embrace and comfort them. Dear Father, we thank you that we can pray for one another with confidence in your holy will being accomplished in our life. We think of the continued difficulty of Bill and Alice not being able to be together. We ask that you would strengthen them. Lord, we pray for Val Ardith, her mother Ardith, and the, what she's going through with dementia, how she needs comfort, as well as Val herself needing comfort and support. We pray for growth and health for Pastor Joshua and Mildred and Monica. And then, Lord, we've especially concerned for the director of FISH, Judy Lamb, as she has had to have emergency back surgery. Lord, we're grateful that we can seek you for health, for the Spirit's fruit, and for a sense that you are truly in the storms of life with us. We're thankful that we can trust in you and your loving care. Lord, we lift up also those going through the stormy challenges of COVID-19 and the virus and its variants. As numbers seem to increase, we pray for your protection and for uh, your blessings upon all. Especially we remember those who are gathered in Tokyo, Japan for the Olympics, that they would be kept safe that even as they glorify you with the wonderful talents in the bodies that uh, you have given them and they have been disciplined to develop, that indeed you would watch over and keep all safe. As schools prepare to open up once again, we ask that you would be with our school here under the apple tree as we also prepare to receive children in the preschool and after school programs. We pray your blessings upon the call process for this congregation and Emmanuel in East Aurora, as well as for Trinity and West Seneca, who have a, a visit from a pastor that we have extended a call to this very weekend. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it is a privilege to remember our brothers and sisters are one with us in Christ. It is a joy to come before you to receive your blessing in communion together. May our sharing at your table make us holy in Jesus, our sanctifier. Grant that through this mystery, we receive the multiplication of joy in the salvation which your only begotten Son accomplished as Redeemer of people from every tribe and nation. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Oh, holy, oh, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, 
that takest away the sin of the world. Grant us thy peace. Bill, take a knee. The body of Christ our Lord given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ our Lord shed for you. Go in his peace. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. We rise as we join together in the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us now thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. in the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Just a few announcements this morning. Um, Satan may not harm us, nor we to sin give place. Abide, O oh dear Redeemer, among us with your word and thus now and hereafter true peace and joy afford abide with heavenly brightness among us precious light your truth direct and keep us from error's gloom 